Welcome everyone. My name is Jeffrey Jones and I am the principal here at Beaver Creek High School. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight to our scheduling meeting. Appreciate all the, all the folks who have shown up tonight to spend some time with us. Uh, we are all here to help tonight in terms of answering questions. I, I know that there are a few that are on people's minds as we've announced a few things this week that I know are of interest, so we're, we're happy to answer those for you. Uh, I'm going to be around tonight, so as, as we are in between presentations, and the like you'd like to talk with me. I'm happy to, to visit with you and see what we can do to help you. But uh, for me, welcome, and uh, just very grateful you're here tonight. Uh, the person I'm going to introduce to you and her team to my right uh, are here to help as well. They're our knowledgeable counseling department. Uh, they are here to answer questions and give some direction on things. Uh, please know that we are videotaping tonight, so we're going to try something really formal and really, really good on the camera. Uh, hopefully it'll make me look good, which I do need from time to time. So. Uh, with that said, we will post this video later uh, as well on our website so you can watch it uh, through again if you need to. Um, as I was talking with some folks down front here tonight, we're trying to do a good job of meeting people's needs in terms of posting the materials beforehand so you can make a decision as to whether you want to be here or if you wanted to know something before you came in. And then obviously tonight I've got some folks who are auditory learners and want to, want to listen, which is great, and interact and ask questions. And then lastly, like I said, we're going to videotape and post this. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you still have questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to call us. Uh, we will be happy to help and uh, get you where you need to go. So, with that said, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to introduce our wonderful presenter tonight, uh, who's going to introduce her team, and that is Mrs. Robin Dooley. taking time out of your evening um, to come here a little bit more about what's going on in the scheduling world for the 2016-17 school year. Um, just kind of going through some basic information tonight with you. Our current ninth graders heard this information today in their history classes. Our 10th graders will hear this tomorrow. Our current 11th graders will hear this on Friday. So some of you are actually hearing this before your kids are. Um, first off is just learning who your counselors are. Um, at the freshman building, there's only one counselor, Ms. Danver. But over here at the main building, especially for our incoming 10th graders, there are multiple counselors for different reasons, mostly because there's so many students. Um, we split our counselors up by last name. And so students whose last names start with the letter A through G, their counselor is Mr. Black, who's right over here. <coughs> students whose last names are the letters H through O, their counselor is Mrs. Smeagol. And then students whose last names start with the letters P through Z, their counselor is Mrs. Laws, who is over actually at Ferguson helping out tonight. Um, there are two exceptions to those. Um, one is if your student does any type of College Credit Plus course, in which case their counselor would be Mrs. Mann. And the other is actually myself. Um, I am the counselor for any student receiving special services. So if they're on an IEP or a 504, regardless of their last name, I would be their counselor. <laughs> Okay. High school graduation requirements have not changed at all. Um, they're still the same. Students need to earn 22 credits to graduate. Four of those credits need to be in English, four in math, four in social studies, three in science. And then the additional credits are a half credit of physical education, which is actually two courses because our phys ed is a quarter credit per class, a half credit of health, one credit of fine arts, and then five credits of electives. To earn the elective credits, um, any additional courses basically fall in that elective category. So foreign language falls in that. If students take um, English electives, business electives, anything that all goes into that category of elective. Um, and then the big question that we always get is about foreign language. To graduate from Beaver Creek High School, you do not have to take a foreign language. However, we recommend it for students who are college bound. A lot of colleges require and like to see at least two years of foreign language on a transcript. Three years is even better. Okay, graduation, yes. Does the sign language count as a foreign language? Yes, sign language does count as a foreign language. Graduation testing requirements are current juniors. So the class of 2017, they still fall under the Ohio graduation requirements of passing all five sections in order to graduate. Uh, the class of 2018 and beyond, they fall under that end of course exam category where they're earning points to graduate, which actually we had a meeting about last week, and that uh, video is online as well if you missed that meeting. But basically the kids will be taking tests primarily at the end of their freshman and sophomore years. 
and then they earn points based on how well they do on that test, having to earn a minimum of 18 points to graduate. <coughs> just some general college planning information. Um, we kind of just broke it down, just the very basic steps for each year. So freshman year, we said, really, the kids take classes that are appropriate for them, and then just reminded them that their GPA starts as a freshman. Um, you know, it's very important because that transition from middle school where if you fail a class, it's not really a big deal. Now that they're in high school, really helping them understand that every credit counts and you need these certain credits to graduate. Sophomore year, uh, we recommend that they continue to take courses that are academically appropriate. They could choose to take the PSAT, the practice SAT, which is offered in October. Um, and then later on in the fall slash early winter, they can apply to the Green County Career Center if that is a route that they wish to take. Junior year, again, you've probably seen the theme here, continue taking academically challenging courses. Um, again, they can choose to take the PSAT in October. Um, begin preparing for the ACT or the SAT beginning um, and begin taking it in winter or spring and then they can start with college visits as well as um, the college rep visits that come here to the <coughs> And then senior year, just reminding them to finish strong. When kids apply to colleges, uh, we send a current schedule. And colleges want to see that they are still choosing to take courses that are rigorous and not filling their senior year just with really easy classes because they're about done. Um, again, taking the ACT and SAT for the last time in the fall, making those college visits, applying to colleges. The typical deadline, we say, is November 1st. Um, applying for scholarships, completing the FAFSA in February, and then, of course, the end of the road, graduation. Okay, so as you have probably heard, there are many changes that are happening to the curriculum here at Beaver Creek High School. So we're going to just kind of highlight a lot of the changes, introduce some of the new courses, and tell you where you can find some more information on those things. Um, first off is English. As I mentioned, students need to earn four credits of English to graduate. What they are currently in right now are pretty basic titles. It might say English 10, Scholarship English 10, Honors English 10, for example, if you have a 10th grader. Next year, what you're going to find are some differences. The English department has changed the way that they're titling their courses. Freshman and sophomore courses will be titled based on the themes that they're going to be studying that semester. And then junior and senior year, we'll talk about here in just a second, they're actually going to be switching format completely. So when the kids get their scheduling sheets, you're going to notice that you don't see the traditional scholarship and honors classes. However, those weighted classes still exist, and in that program of studies, you'll find that information. It'll say the weight of a class um, being a 4.5 weight or a 5.0, and that would clue you into whether it was a scholarship honors or just a general class 4.0. English, and ele English 11 and 12, like I said, instead of taking year-long classes this change, there's a big list of semester electives that the kids are going to get, and they need to choose two of the English classes, choices, each year. So they'll still have to earn a full year of credit, um, a full credit each year, but they've got more choice now. Um, there's a lot of different choices. They're very focused on themes. Um, Kind of exciting to see those changes come down the road for the kids. The biggest thing to watch, and it'll make more sense when your kids start bringing home their scheduling sheets, and we tried to list it um, visually on the sheet, is that you, a student cannot take both the weighted and unweighted version of a course because the material is the same. So for example, um, a general level course might be called Funny Business. The scholarship equivalent is called Funny Bones. Students can't choose to take both because it's the same class. It's the same material, just higher expectations. Our AP English has uh, changed a little bit. Now we offer two AP classes. There's AP Language and Composition and AP Literature and Composition. They're both year-long classes. Um, the recommendation is that students take the language in 11th grade and literature in 12th, although they do not have to. And they, in theory, could take both at the same time if they really wanted a challenge. Um, students in AP English, they could still choose to take any of the other semester offerings. So even if I take AP Language, if I'm really interested in Funny Bones, I can still take that class, for example. For Social Studies, again, they need four credits to graduate. Thus far, there's been a specific class each year, and in the ninth and 10th grade levels, those are staying very similarly. 
Um, the 10th grade is still gonna be US history. There will be two options on the kids' sheets. There's modern US history, and then there's a US history that has some specific dates on it that I don't know off the top of my head. Um, and that it would be equivalent to like an honors level. They need a teacher recommendation to get into it because it has a higher expectation of the kids, so we wanna make sure that they're ready for that. Um, financial literacy is a piece that is required by the state of Ohio. Currently, it's in our junior history classes, and that's now being moved to our 10th grade for next year. And if we are told that if a student takes the honors 10th grade level course, then the expectation is that they would be taking the AP US history course as an 11th grader. So just kind of a heads up because <coughs> there's something with the course that they might have to go back and take the general version if they don't continue on that AP advanced track. For 11th and 12th grade, it's gonna be tricky for about a year. Um, traditionally, our kids have always taken government as a senior and it's been a year long class. Starting next year, they can choose to take government as an 11th grader or a 12th grader. They can also choose to take a semester of government, which is the Ohio requirement, or they could go ahead and just take the full year of government. Either way, they still need one credit per year, so it's really personal choice in what the students are interested in. Um, our recommendation, because students need four credits, is to take one credit per year, both junior year and senior year. So some options could include, maybe they choose, whether they're a junior or a senior, they could choose to take one semester of government next year, and then choose any of our other great social studies electives for the other half that would complete the full credit. They could choose to take two, or they could choose to take the full year of government, and then they're just one class and they're done. Or, um, if they complete their government as a junior, and then they become a senior, since their government is done, they could just choose any two of the social studies electives. And there are lots of great social studies electives, and there's actually some new ones that we'll be talking about tonight as well. Math, there are no changes to math. Um, four credits to graduate, the typical path is up there. Um, nothing has changed with that, honestly, which makes it a little bit nice, something familiar for everyone. Science, 10th um, graders will still primarily take biology. Our 11th graders will have the choice then of chemistry or our science electives, the semester elective choices. Um, those still exist, however, we've added one new semester elective, which is environmental <coughs> science. And the other thing that we've been reminding students is if your student took biology as a ninth grader, they will have to take physics before they graduate at some point. The state of Ohio has a physical science requirement, and our traditional Science 9 class is what meets that. So if the student skips Science 9 and took biology, they still need to take physics to meet that physical science requirement. <coughs> okay. We have tons of electives that we have offered for years. They're tried and, tried and true electives, and almost all of them are still gonna be around. But we wanted to highlight a few of our new courses that we're gonna be offering for the first time next year. Um, the first, we are expecting to bring a junior ROTC program to the high school. This would be offered for ninth through 12th graders. It is a year-long class, it's an elective. Um, it would be during the day, and then there actually will also be some after-school extracurricular component to it. Um, it'll be through the Air Force. And right now on the scheduling sheet, there's a formal application process, but right now it's on there so the kids can go ahead and mark it, showing that they're interested in it, and then we'll get more information out to them as it is available to us. Um, there are two new semester English classes that are going to be offered next school year for our 9th through 12th graders. There is a composition <laughs> class, and there is also an ACT SAT prep class, which is one we've been asked for a long time if we were going to be having something like that. Um, printmaking is not necessarily new. We tried to offer it last year, but we didn't have enough students interested in, interested in it. Um, it is a level two art class, so it's for our 10th through 12th graders. They would have had to take art one first, um, but that is another option available. In the science world, we've added a pre-AP chemistry and a pre-AP physics course. Uh, the environmental science elective, which I mentioned, and then we've got two new AP courses. We have AP psychology and then AP studio art as well. On the right-hand side of this slide are all of the new history electives. So as I mentioned, um, there's a bunch. 
First, there is current events for our 9th through 12th graders, and then everything else shifts to 10 through 12. There's contemporary issues, sports and society, history through film, America's wars, American icon and legends, and then design thinking 301. We've offered design thinking 101 and 201 previously. 301 will be new. The prerequisite for design thinking 301 is that a student took 101 or 201, either one. And one thing that we talked to the kids about today as well with the history classes, these are not by any means just blow off elective classes. It's important for them to read their program of studies um, because these courses also could count as part of those four credits that they need to earn before they graduate. So while history and film sounds great, they're not just going to be sitting and watching movies every day. They are going to have to do a lot of writing actually with that. All of them have a very heavy writing component to them. Same thing, you know, we told them that sports and society, you know, you're not just going to be watching ESPN every day. There's going to be writing involved with it, too. So we just, again, encouraging them to read the program of studies very carefully when making their decisions. Okay. Uh, this is, this is new to our school, and uh, some of you guys have probably, uh, this may be the reason that you're here. So, let me, so the PE waiver option is, uh, is an option for, for kids to basically waive their PE requirement for high school. The requirement remains, um, but they do not. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just using Coach twice. My fault. Okay, the PE, the PE waiver option will allow kids to waive out of the PE requirement in terms of the two semesters of classwork. The, the waiving out must happen. They, they, have to, uh, they have to sign on their course sheet that they would like to waive out of the PE, um, out, waive out of the PE requirement. This does not grant credit for PE, but it, will, but it will issue the requirement based on a year of participation in a approved extracurricular activity. Okay, so I don't, Feel free to ask questions. I'm not sure if I explained that well enough. Um, up there, you can see some of the examples that are approved. And again, when, we, when I say approved here, I'm talking about what the state of Ohio approves as a PE waiver for this option. These are not these are not district decisions on our part. So, so if, if something that you're involved in doesn't fall within within the range of the PE waiver, that is not our decision locally. That is state decision. Mrs. Fleck. Yes. So my question is, since let's say for example the class of 2018 has been accumulating credits since maybe eighth grade they took an advanced class, but freshman year, so 2014 to 2018, they're expected to get 22 credits. So for this waiver, does that include any sport they participated in since 2014, or because this is new, it goes from this next year on? From, from right now, as you are learning about this, that it's already happened. So, so like, with your kids, if they've already started, right, the fall, right. Yeah. So, okay. with your kids, if they've already started, if they've already started in the process of taking one of those PEs, mm -hmm. they've got to go ahead and take PE, okay? okay? So, if, if they have not taken a PE yet, basically, at this point, and they want to do the waiver, mm -hmm. they, they would sign that on their course sheet, and then they would need to fulfill that requirement of the year-long participation. So there's no blending of the two. Okay. There's no 0.25 with the first PE and then a half a year of uh, activity. Yeah. Uh, can you mix and match? Can you do one season of football and then one and then ROTC? Right. Uh, well, they, yeah, but they, those two don't exactly blend half and half because the ROTC requirement's full year. And the, and the football would be just that season. Uh, but yeah, as long as he completed the year and the half, that would, that would weigh, correct? Because, so, yeah. because the end of the activity, the advisor's gonna sign on. Right. Okay, so in, in the example you've given, if a student signs up for Jay Rotsey and then plays <laughs> next in the fall, at the end of that freshman year, they're done. Mm -hmm. Because they will have completed the Rotsey requirement, which is one full year of coursework. And then with athletics, with cheerleading, with marching band, those are seasonal. So uh, another example could be if, if, a, if a student comes out and plays for Nick in the fall and turns around and wrestles for Gary Wise, at the end of winter, you're done. As long as you complete the requirements of that, and that is to the sponsor slash coach slash supervisor slash Rossi coordinator. So, but yes, if your child has taken one 
semester of PE already, and they're in marching band or football or whatever. They're so still required to take two seasons. That the, the freshmen this year are the ones who are in no man's land, <coughs> as I would put it. Everybody has taken one credit because we can't excuse half of the requirement. The higher advice code states very clearly that you must have two seasons or two years of ROTC that they don't blend. You don't get to do a, a PE and a season combined to say you're not. So. so if you're thinking in terms of a kid who has done, if you have that scenario, you did a half a year, and they are in an activity, if the activity is up on the screen, if they have two semesters of that activity, is that how they should go? Or should they register for another PE or this upstairs? This is a discussion to have with your student. Because here's how the discussion has to go. And feel free to ship them off to us. I'll, I'll be happy to have a conversation. I, we did this in my previous two buildings that I was in. So I feel real comfortable with the conversation. So a freshman who has one quarter credit of PE already, the conversation needs to be with them. If you would like to take advantage of the waiver, you're going to have to play two seasons. And you're just going to have to. They begin next year. Yep, being with the next school year. PE requirements only have credit, right? Yes, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's the one subject, unless you would have jazz band for credit, which I've had in my other high schools I've been at. PE is the one where you get half a credit for a full year worth of work. It's, it's odd compared to, say, a semester course where you get a half a credit. You take a semester of gym, you only get a quarter credit. It's one of those ones that has less credit than seat time, time. Yes, ma'am. If my son took cross country freshman year and he's yep. a sophomore now, uh -huh. he takes it again next year. Can he use those two seasons or he's no? Well, our advice code states that when you start PE waiver in your district, there is no retroactive activity. So, <coughs> last question. This option goes into 9th or 11th graders. If I have a sophomore and I take it in 9th or 11th graders, she's in March and April. If she you know, starts next year, she even has to take marching band, those are the seniors, but if she's taking it as a senior, it's not going to apply based on that, right? Make sure I understand your question. You said this option is open to 9th and 11th graders. Yes, because what, what happens is if you've not completed your waiver by the end of your junior year, we will enroll you in PE because we will not take the chance if you're not graduating because you don't have that component. So when we say it's open to 9, 10, 11, and again, keep in mind, this is us working with what the state of Ohio has given us. The fact of the matter is, is that if you have a junior next year, and you say, I'm going to do the waiver because I've only got one, one of my PE requirements done of the two that you have to, you have to, by the end of your junior year, say she, she marches, she's going to need to do something else under the, under the umbrella of activities, whether it's uh, track in the spring or basketball in the winter, you'll have to do something else beyond marching band or to receive the PE waiver. So, yes? I'm sorry, I have two questions. Yes, ma'am. I have a child that played on the um, reserve soccer team last year, this year, as a freshman. That if, what if he doesn't make the team next year? Well, first of all, anything that a child has done in our building to this point doesn't mm -hmm. count. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it did. No, it's okay. okay. That's, I, it's something that people have a question about because they're like, cool, I've played freshman and sophomore yeah. football, I'm done. It's, right. When you implement PE waiver for the state of Ohio, it all starts over with that year. So everything so starts over year. next year. But okay. if you've taken one PE course, now you have a decision to make. Then you can, but you can add like one year of an activity and be done. No, you cannot blend them. Okay. That's you have to take two, two activities. Okay, my other question was, does the bowling team count? Bowling is an Ohio high school approved. That's a great question because I tell you, a year ago, lacrosse parents would have been upset because Ohio high school says you can't have club sports. So I'm glad Ohio high school made lacrosse an activity for us for next year. Yes, ma'am. Can you do the summer PE and a sport and count that as one? There is no blending. You either are going to take advantage of the activities or you're going to complete the two courses required PE. There's no mix and match. Okay, but is summer PE then half a credit, and then if you take a full year, that's still half a credit? If you take summer PE, you will receive one of the units required by the state of Ohio. The one-fourth? Yes. Okay. Yeah, depending on the length that you take summer school PE, so three weeks for a quarter and six weeks for a half. There you go. Okay. Okay.
Blending, so you can't say I took PE first semester, I played football, and I'm done. So if your student is a current freshman, has a quarter credit, they took first semester PE, took second semester. So they've got one quarter credit of PE done. If they want to take advantage of the waiver, they're going to have to do two activities for two years of ROTC in order to complete this. This one year of PE credit, as far as the state of Ohio is, doesn't count for anything going forward. So you can't blend it. Correct. As of right now, I don't believe lacrosse is the last of our club sports, if I remember correctly. So I don't believe we have any club sports at this point in time. So, but I, you know what I'll do? I'll make sure I talk with Mr. Pomble to make sure I'm clear on that. It's not no, It's not going to your local. It has to be Ohio High School. Yes, ma'am. Spring sports for this year count? No, Starts with the fall of next year. Yep. Okay. If, um, if you guys have some more specific questions, we'll, we'll be all available yep. down here. We can move to yep. first look. Okay. Happy to be out there and answer questions. Yeah. Yeah. So. PE waiver had the most questions today, too, with the current ninth graders. It is tricky because it's new, but if you have specific questions, we're happy to help you with that as well afterwards. Um, moving on, student load. Students need to take a minimum of six courses each semester. So they can choose to have a full year-long study hall. They could also choose to take six and a half credits one semester and a study hall the other. The biggest thing we tell them is if they know they need a study hall, take the full year because we cannot guarantee a study hall in one specific um, semester. All students will register for a, for a full schedule at this point. So even if you're, if they're, we tell them, even if they're moving, even if they're going to do College Credit Plus, if they're going to do the work program or applying to the Career Center, right now, we want them all to register for a full schedule, and then afterwards, we will work with them on adjusting them and changing it to meet whatever program they're doing the following school year. Um, word of the wise to the kids, we tell them to pick their courses very wisely. They need to choose what is appropriate for them. What's best for their best friend might not be the best thing for them. So program of studies, which we'll show you where that's at here in a few minutes, that is going to be their best gauge between that, conversations with their parents, and conversations with their teachers of where they should be placed for the next year. Um, they know their responsibilities outside of the school day and if they have time or not to take all advanced classes, for example. Uh, schedule change, our policy, if the, after a student submits the request, if there's further, if they want to change something between now and the end of the school year, not a problem. They just contact their counselor. Once the schedules are set, though, we really, really try not to change any schedules. Um, and definitely are changing student schedules due to teacher conflicts. If the course was not what they thought it was, that's why, again, program of studies, they need to read that. Um, please help them to, when they fill out their schedule sheet, to include three backup choices. There's a spot right on the sheet for it. That's something that we as counselors use if there's a conflict in their schedule, if a course is not being offered. Um, they can just list classes, and, or sometimes kids leave us really specific notes, like if I get into student council, then drop this class. That is totally fine. Um, they still need to obtain teacher recommendations on their sheet, and then they actually will be turning in their scheduling sheets to their history teacher um, no later than March 21st. Okay, so today in homeroom, students all receive two things. One is their unofficial transcript. This is a free copy to them. One purpose, we want them to look over and make sure things look right, especially if they're a move-in student. If something looks kind of off about it, they definitely need to see their counselor um, because we very well could have an error that we need to fix. Um, the other purpose is so that they know what they've taken. By the time they get up to being a junior, sometimes they forget what they took as a freshman. Um, they also received a white paper in homeroom that is a single-use login and password. They're going to need this to schedule on the online portal, and so we're telling them to hang it on your fridge, take a picture of it on your phone, whatever, so you don't lose that, because without that login and password, they cannot submit their course request online. The biggest thing that is different of how we're doing this, in years past, the kids have always met with us twice. 
Once is the class presentation to give them something very similar to what you're hearing tonight. The second time has been in the computer lab where we go through with them and we have them enter their course requests in there. The difference this year is that they're going to do the submitting of the course requests at home with their parents. The window of opportunity to do that will be open um, Friday night, the 11th through the 20th, which is a Sunday. Um, because we want them to have those conversations with their teachers. We want them to have those conversations with their parents. Um, they, we just want them to read the course of studies. We want them to be prepared for the classes that they are signing up for. So to, instead of doing it here at school, they'll be doing it at home with you all. Um, and on the website, there is a step-by-step -step tutorial walking them through how to do this. So we're going to pull that up for you. If you go to the Beaver Creek High School webpage, right on the top under popular, there is a link for course request information, which is going to take you to the counseling office webpage. And it is all going to be right there on the webpage. There are multiple um, links for you to click on from there. <coughs> So right on the counseling page, the top one is a copy of the presentation I'm giving right now. The second one down um, is going to be a PDF. It's of the scheduling instruction PowerPoint. And when I put this PowerPoint together, it literally will walk them through step by step, what they need, how they begin, step one, step two, step three. There are screenshots of what the things look like. Um, there are things circled, click here. If they pull that up, my recommendation is pull that up on one like, tab, on the next tab, have the internet open and just do it at the same time. They need to go through from start to finish or they very well will miss probably a pretty important step. Um, we also put together a frequently asked question word document. Every single thing that we could think of that kids always ask us is on that frequently asked questions page. So as they're doing this, hopefully they're including parents. If the PowerPoint doesn't answer it, and if the frequently asked questions doesn't answer it, we have another option, which I'll get to here in a minute. Um, the last link is the program of studies that we've been talking about. It's a very large document, has more information than you will ever want to know, probably, about everything offered at Beaver Creek High School. But most importantly, it does have those class summaries and class descriptions that the kids really need to read about. It also will indicate like the class weight, the class weight, which again is what's going to be your indicator of if it's a scholarship or honors level class. Okay, so as I mentioned again, it's super important that they follow that tutorial. And then if they still need extra help, next week on Tuesday and Wednesday in this building over in the computer lab 1060, which is on the back side of the commons, the high school counselors will be here to help our current 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. And then the same thing will be happening over at Ferguson to help our current 8th graders. We will be here from 5 to 7 having what I call open office hours. And so we will be here to work through the stuff with the kids. They just need to come, bring their scheduling sheet, they can bring a parent if they'd like, that's up to them. We can submit the request if they want, if they have questions, we're just there to help them and you, however it's needed. One thing that we're telling the kids, and it would be good for you guys to know as well, is that if they have a course that is handwritten in by their teacher, which typically is either gonna be a special education course or an advanced level course that most people their grade don't take, if they're handwritten in, the kids aren't going to find those online. We have to hand enter those for them. So if they could come during that 5 to 7 window on Tuesday or Wednesday, that would be great. Or they could just come see us during the school day. Um, and then again, obviously, they're welcome to see us anytime if they have further questions. Or they can send us an email as well, because we'll be running around probably a lot over the next couple weeks um, meeting with classes and that kind of a thing.